Um, we are the William sisters. I'm Sir Rina. <laughs> and I'm Penis William. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Seriously, seriously. I'm Vitus. And I'm Linda. And we are the first ever trans team to ever compete at a GLTA event. And I think we had just made history, didn't we, girl? Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> at first, it was a bit lonely being the, the lone trans at Tennis Sydney. For, so for years, I was just by myself hanging out with the boys. And then I took some time off. Tennis to me is like a love-hate relationship. One day I love it, one day I hate it, just depending on how much I'm losing. You know? But when I came back, you know, I met you at the, <laughs> at, at the toilets. So, yeah. At the ladies' bathroom, not <laughs> the toilet. I don't even think that, you know, we're cruising. <laughs> and yeah, so the more I came back to Tennessee, the more I realized, oh, there's more of us now. Yeah, the, team, I, the the clubs involved. So yeah. yeah, and I only learned how to play tennis in two thousand and twenty, I think, during lockdown. Because remember the lockdown, you can only <coughs> have two people outdoor exercising. So that's how I took up tennis. But I, I was worried because you know, being a trend, I, and around all the gay boys, I don't know how. Girl, <coughs> nothing to worry about. So I didn't know how they would see me because, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm i quite old, so I'm 60 years old now. So, you know, at the time, you know, when I grew up, it was hard. Like, you know, even gay discriminate us, you know, even, yeah. you know. So, and I don't know how I'd be received, you know, so, but, but it was, I think times change. You know, they were really, really nice to me. And then, and of course, I met Linda. I encourage you to toilet. be a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> but with yeah. me, Billy, you know, when I was younger, still played tennis before I got injured, I was single-minded about going out into the public and teaching the straight world that transgender exists. So I was out and open. I was competing in straight tournaments, World Masters games, being an out. I've raised some eyebrows for sure, but hey, it's time to move the world to a new, you know, mm -hmm. sphere. And um, I, I was, yeah, I wasn't scared. Um, that's why when you said, you know, you were not sure how the boys would take it, you know, yeah. just be you and people will love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I learned with my experience. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, straight away from day one, I feel, you know, they accepted me and then. So I guess time has changed, you know, people is a, it's in, not forward thinking. In not such a short it. space, it's changed. I think every, in my feeling that since they said yes to gay marriage, that's when everything just fell into place. And then, oh, yeah, that, yeah, right, have yeah, you, yeah, do yeah. you feel that? Like yeah, everyone's yeah. just more accepting since then. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now after the world, Sydney World Pride, oh, I yeah. think we're now being celebrated, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. I think it's so great, you know, because, you know, yeah, because I was born in the 60s, so you know, when I was four or five years old, I knew, I looked in the mirror and said, I'm a girl. But in the late 60s, this is, you cannot tell people, you cannot. So it's considered, it's, you know, like it's evil, it's deviant, you're a freak, you know, so. You even get arrested back in the You even get arrested, yeah, so I don't even, I didn't even know there's a community underground. Oh, it has to be underground then, isn't it? Yeah. It's all illegal, but. Um, yeah, yeah, so it was, um, it was hard mm -hmm. because I felt like I was the only person. So when I was very young in Hong Kong, I, when I was a teenager, I met another trans girl at a gay disco, but the, the gay disco then, the club was underground as well, like, you know, you, like, and um, she got kicked out from home, from parents, she was living on the street, she was working on the street, and at 19 she committed suicide Ooh, wow. because it just, it's just a horrible, like, at mm. that time, that was the early 70s as well, so, and then I was so scared, and I, I said to myself, you know, I, I can't, I can't let no one know, you know, and, but then I was living my life, I didn't, I didn't transition until I'm, I was 38, mm -hmm. so, wow. so, yeah, from, wow. from then to then, I was living 
well, I have to put myself in the box, so I was a gay boy. And, but I feel I have no identity. Al although I, you know, I went into the gay relationship, I have to do the gay things and everything. I, I was never comfortable, so I never have identity. I've, I have no self-esteem, no, no confidence at all, because I don't know how to dress myself, I don't know how to present myself. Just, yeah. yeah and, but when I was probably 10 years old, I tried to pick up a record to play, but because I was too weak, I couldn't play. Because the record was wooden, it was, I was too heavy for me. Girl! <laughs> so I, I played badminton instead, uh -huh. and, and swimming. So, but I, I, I followed the games all these years. I always wanted to play. Mm -hmm. But then there was opportunity then, you know. My dad had a wooden racket as well, so I was playing against the wall. Mm -hmm. But when Monica Sellers just lost to Steffi Graf at that 1989 French oh, love, final, love, love, <gasps> that's when I fell in love with tennis. I'm like, so I tried to play with double hand and I thought, this is shit, I'm gonna go back to one hand. <laughs> but yeah, that's when I really got into tennis and Monica Sellers. For me, it's a family. Mm -hmm. It's an extension of my own blood family, you know, so I just see everyone as just my brothers and my sisters. Just, I love the great camaraderie. The straight people, well, the straight tennis club, they, they have their own camaraderie, but I kind of felt left out in a bit because of being a trans. I never really got into that, yeah, you know how the men are, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't say fitness because I don't care if I win or lose. <laughs> I'm there to look good. <laughs> We're there to look good going down. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, you suck. No, but yeah, it's, it's not so much about winning these days. Yeah, it's just yeah. participating and yes. getting your oxygen flow yeah. going. Yeah. When I was younger, definitely, I wanted to beat all the guys. But now it's like, yeah, you can win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for me it's exercise, but also um, it's a community that I feel so comfortable in, um, because they, you know, in in tennis Sydney, um, there's there's different grades of it's open player and D player, but I, you know, but I don't feel like they look down on me because I'm a D player. I think everyone in tennis Sydney in our club feels as important equal to everyone else. Tennis Sydney has definitely evolved yeah. to be more inclusive amongst one another. Yeah. Not just inclusive with, you know, genders, I think it's more inclusive with, with, with abilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. With different abilities level of play. Mm -hmm. I don't feel I'm less than you, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even if I am a lower level player, I don't feel I'm below you. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about tennis. It's about the whole community, about friendship, about love, extended family, you know, yeah. about fun, you know, we all have fun, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Anyone is welcome, you know, old, young, straight, just human beings. Just and I think that's what makes a good club. It's all about the sport. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what have you got mm -hmm. underneath mm -hmm. your outfit, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's all about the sport. And I noticed the females really want to play against me to test them, <laughs> to test themselves out. <laughs> That's when I was good at tennis, you know. So, yeah, uh, I've been, I was seen as a challenge for the women, so they all want to play against me. But it was all about the sport, nothing yeah. else. And that, I think that's the core of what makes a good club. It's all about what they represent. Just come and say hello in the toilet, isn't it? <laughs> <I mean, laughs> no, no, no. Just yeah, just come. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just so, so friendly and just so non-judgmental. You know, yeah. And not only that, it's not just about sport. It's about being social as well. It's being out in the sunshine. Yeah. It's about and, being you and enjoying you love and enjoying it? people's company that yeah. on the same wavelength as yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And don't, you don't have to pretend to be anyone you're not. Girl, we pretend like the William sisters when yeah, I talk about <laughs> When I used to play sport, or even I, I used to swim, I used to be a, a swimmer until puberty and then I stopped because I can see my shoulder getting bigger, my body, that's how it, when I stopped playing any sport. So to pick up tennis at the age of 57, like I'm 
I, I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Who is your favorite male tennis player? My favorite male? There's a few. You're number one. I would say for me, Pat Rafter. I like Stan Moringa. Oh, he's more well, really? Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, Pat, Pat Rafter was cute. It was so. beautiful in his heyday. Not now. <laughs> <laughs>